The Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise God. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us this week as we continue with our special uh, series. This is the last installment, if you will, of our series with Pastor Keith Moore from Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. I really appreciate Faith Life Church allowing us to share this with you. I just believe this message is so important. The entire body of Christ needs to hear this message. And so I wanted to play it for you right here on the Word of Faith netcast. So let's go into that right now and conclude this special message with Pastor Keith Moore. People, you'll come and beg and they'll be hard as a rock. Are you listening? You'll have no favor with them and you will not have an opportunity to make it right. And it is at this critical point when somebody looks at you and asks you what you knew what you knew, what you understood. Who did it? Something goes wrong. Something wasn't done. Something's not right. And somebody looks at you and goes, what happened? Are y'all with me now? What happened? Now here is where nine out of ten Start covering their tracks. Hmm? And start saying, you know, well, uh, you know, what what was it? Were we supposed to do this? Or, or, or we didn't know? Or, friend, if you're lying, you're in trouble right now. You're in trouble with God. And you cannot prosper in this situation. Cannot. Are y'all with me? Yes. What do you need in a situation like this? Help me out. What do you need? You need mercy. You want grace. Who gets the grace? The humble get the grace. Are the humble honest? Does it take humility to be honest and tell the truth when it's not pretty? When it makes you look bad? When it'll embarrass you? Oh, come on, are y'all with me, saints? This, this is critical. But if you're coming out, you got to have grace. Tell me who's coming out. According to this verse, put it up again, Proverbs 28, 13. According to this verse, who is going to get the mercy? Help me out. Who's going to get it? Who's going to get it? The people that confess it. What does that mean? Tell it. If you did it, you did it. Huh? If you wrecked the car, run over the dog and burnt the house down. Huh? What do you say? They're going to help me or not. What, what do you say? Do you know? If you did it, if you did it, you did it. Who did it? And if it was you, you go, somebody comes in and goes, who burnt the house down? Who burnt the house down? I'm telling you, five out of ten Christians say, well, I came up here and it was a burning. It was, I don't know, and the dog, I don't know how he got under the car, but <laughs> it, was, uh, it just happened so fast. Liar. Liar. Devilish. Are you with me now? And see, even people that don't know you're lying, even people that don't know you're lying, their heart will harden towards you. Even when they don't know. And they don't know why they're that way. Why? Because God is not going to give you favor through them. Because you're hiding and covering your sin like Adam and Eve running into the bushes. Right? And when he asked them what happened, what are they doing? 
right? That woman, the serpent. He was pointing somewhere, but there wasn't nobody around. <laughs> Everybody was pointing somewhere else. How many say dishonest, 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 deceptive, closing your eyes. See, the problem with God is there's no way you can fool him about what you see. He knows what, he was the one that showed it to you. He was there when you saw it. No way you can turn around later and tell him, uh, uh, I didn't know. I didn't see. Friend, this, get, get serious with your children on this kind of stuff. Did you do such and such, honey? Oh, no. Uh, I didn't know. You look at them and go, say what? You what? You didn't know. And if you know they knew, I mean the music stops. Everything stops right now. Because we were, we were making along okay until you decided to tell me a lie. Now, it's become serious. This is life and death, whether you realize it or not. I don't know if you understand the gravity of what I'm talking about. Situations are made and broken in that moment when somebody looks at you and asks a question. Whether you're coming out of this or whether you're going down is decided right here, right now. As to whether you start playing games, you put on crocodile tears, you try to, you know, jive and shift around and, and, and make excuses and, and try to con somebody. Now you do that, you are on your own. You do not have the grace of God. You're not going to have the mercy of God. How many without the grace of God, you're in trouble. You are in trouble. You're in trouble. But what if you'll be a man? <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people grew up in families where the truth was not held up like it should have been. It just wasn't. Their parents lied. Their parents told them to go tell the teacher a lie. We have not seen how serious this is. Oh, friend, this is about one of the worst things you could do in life. And so they grew up like that. And so there are people who lie to you for no good reason. They just soon lie to you to tell you the truth. I've had preachers look me in the eye and just lie to me. One of the saddest things. I'd rather they slap me. I, I'm not joking. I'd rather they just reach out with their back hand and just lay one on me. Mr. Are you serious? I am serious. Why? Because the enemy of my soul is doing that to me every day. Trying to deceive me and lie to me. Right? And he's doing the same thing to you. How dare we lie to each other? We're not children of lies. We're children of light. We're children of truth. The spirit of truth lives in us. But I don't care if you grew up lying. And if it's a habit with you, you can break yourself from it. I said, you can break yourself if you will. Let me tell you how you do it. You know, people get carried away. They're on the phone. They're telling some story. They embellish. They elaborate. Lie. <laughs> and then you hang up and you realize, oh, man, I didn't tell that right. Tell me what you do. Tell me what you do. Right. Call them right back. See, you already know what to do. <laughs> Why aren't you doing it? <laughs> Call them right back. And what do you say? Help me out. What do you say? What do you say? <laughs> say, hey, Bobby, Susie, hey, you know the thing we were just talking about a few minutes ago? And you know, I said such and such and such. Uh, that was a lie. Is that easy? Oh, no. Most people are not even strong enough to do it. They won't do it. But if you, if you would be strong enough to do it, it wouldn't take many times you'd break yourself from it because you, <laughs> you'd start to lie and you'd go, oh, no, I, no, I don't want to have to make that call. I, I don't want, you'd, you'd break yourself from it, wouldn't you? Yes. Somebody says, well, if I do that, they'll think less of me. No, they know they themselves have done the same thing and didn't have courage to do what you're doing right now. They'd actually respect it. Now, if you have to do it every other day, 
Well, that's going to be a little different. <laughs> but you've got to be strong enough and honest enough to acknowledge. And somebody says, well, did you see that? Did you understand? You know, as a leader, we have people working under us, and we have people in, in the church and teams. And sometimes, you know, things haven't gone exactly the way that you instructed that they should go. And, uh, you know, some things irritate you more than others. But I, as a leader, I've learned, I, my first thing I have to find out, was it ignorance or was it rebellion? Because these two should be dealt with completely differently. Is that right? Whether it's a child, whether it's an employee, whether it's a church member, it makes no difference. It's the same. I got to find out. So I need to talk to them. I need to find out. Did you understand what we said to do? And of course, if they're under the gun and, and if something's hanging in the balance, people will be tempted to lie. Because if I, if I can play ignorant and it'll get me out of it, it's a temptation. Right. To say, I didn't know. No, I didn't understand. I didn't know that that's what you wanted. No, I didn't understand you wanted that today. No, I didn't know that. If and sometimes leaders are just poor communicators. They expected people to read their minds, and they didn't communicate it properly. And sometimes you can say one thing, and people actually hear something else, and, and there is a misunderstanding. And if that is the case, then it's ignorance. Discipline is not appropriate here. There needs to be instruction, because there really is ignorance. But because that is an out, people use it all the time. And they play the ignorant card. But what I'm talking about today from the Word, do you understand what a serious mistake that is? Because when you do that, you are deceiving somebody and you have cut yourself off from the spirit of grace and mercy. And the Bible said you're hiding and covering your sins and you cannot prosper now. You can't get the mercy and grace of God. You're in a bad way, aren't you? And I'm in no lying never. I mean, you tell one lie, if you're going to maintain it, it's going to take two others to try to keep that one going and cover it. Lies are inconsistent, so you're always trying to cover your tracks. It never ends. And now you got that between you and them. Every time you see them, you know you lied to them, and it makes you act funny around them. Did you hear what I'm saying? Condemnation is, how many of what condemnation does to your faith? To your confidence. How many of you understand this just gets, gets worse and worse and worse? What should you have done? What should you have done? No matter how bad it made you look, how bad it made you feel, if it cost you severely, there is no option to telling the truth for a sincere child of God. The Lord never told you you could tell a lie about it. Well, in this situation, just go ahead and tell this little lie. It won't be. The Lord never told you such a thing, never will, never will. To the real child of God that's committed, there is no option. There is no alternative. There's only one thing to do. What is it? Do you know what it is? Only one thing to do. You look them in the eye, what do you say? I did it. Why'd you do it? I just had a better idea, I thought. I just thought you didn't know what you're talking about. And I just, see, nobody wants to do this, but it's the truth so many times. I just thought, I'd, you know, you weren't here, you weren't doing it, so you didn't know, and I just used my prerogative, and I just decided I would do it. That's rebellion, isn't it? Yeah. What does it need? Does it need us to sit down and talk about this for an hour? No, no you don't need no talking at all. What needs to happen? It needs to cost you something. Right now. <laughs> Needs to be an action. Not talking. Action. But what if the person comes clean? Uh, what if your little one, what if your child looks up in your face and you say, why didn't you, what, did you know you were supposed to do that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> why didn't you do it? What do they usually they'll go? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think maybe it was because you didn't want to quit playing your game and you just didn't have time to do that. Is that right? Mm-hmm. 
and they don't try to lie to you, and they don't try to cover it. What does it do to your heart? Come on, help me. What does it do to your heart? It inclines your heart towards them, right? Even if they need some discipline, you're not interested in being too harsh on them. I mean, they're being honest. They're being honest, and the honest and the humble get the grace, get the mercy. It'll happen every time. God, even somebody that was hard towards you, God will get a hold of their heart and just turn it. And just turn it. Even though they might have meant to just shut you out and write you off, God will get involved in the thing. He'll get involved in the thing. But if you lie, he won't be. You're on your own. In closing, look at this in uh, Titus. We've made a mistake as the church by ignoring uh, scriptures in the New Testament. Just ignore. We call ourselves word people. <laughs> but it's only on certain selected texts. <laughs> But I'm going to know all the word is word. Look at Titus 3 and notice something that's very enlightening. If someone wants to be argumentative about the word, how many times should we try to teach them about this? I know as a minister, I've had people want to argue with me and I've tried to talk to them time and time again and thinking, well, bless the hearts. They, ju they just need more instruction. But I'm seeing more and more that's not the case. And this makes it abundantly clear. We haven't been dealing with people the way the Scripture told us to in calling ourselves being good Christians because we're willing to teach people and tell them again another hundred times, we've actually been rebellious in not obeying the Scripture. In, uh, what did I say, Titus? Third chapter, I believe it is. Titus chapter 3 and verse 10. Put it up on the screen for us, please. Titus 3 and 10. A man that is a heretic... Now, the word heretic, in other translations, it talks about somebody that stirs up division, causing division. This is an arguer, a fusser. After warning him, after the first and second admonition, reject. Look at the next verse. Knowing that he that is such is subverted and sins being condemned of himself. What does that mean? His own heart is condemning him for what he's doing. His arguing and fussing. Now if he's not listening to his own heart, he's not going to listen to you. So how many more times do you need to try to correct him and teach him? We haven't talked about this kind of thing enough, have we? And here it is right there in the New Testament. What the Bible, let me read this to you from another translation. The ESV. ESV says, As for a person who stirs up division after warning him once and then twice, have nothing more to do with him. Should we take this seriously or not? The New Century, the NCV says, after a first and second warning, avoid someone who causes arguments. How many more times do they need to hear it? The, uh, the Living Bible, if anyone's causing divisions among you, he should be given a first and a second warning, and after that, have nothing more to do with him. See, so many people think that'd be unchristian. Well, I reckon the New Testament knows what a Christian is supposed to be. But see, what denominations and groups, they've come up with their own version of what a Christian is supposed to be. And a good parent is supposed to lovingly and kindly tell that screaming rebellious child another 49 times. 
or if it takes it another 300. No, honey, let's go over it one more. Well, actually, this is 103 now. But let's go over it again. You're being a fool. You're being a fool. And actually, the more times you tell them, the less respect they have for what you say. And you're teaching them to ignore you and to despise you. If they understand, do they need more instruction? No. How many more times do you need to tell them? None. What needs to happen? Well, if it's a case of somebody under you that you're in charge, there should be some kind of discipline. If they're not, if they're not under you, then you just should to not try to talk to them about it anymore. The Scripture said have nothing more to do with them. I know that sounds too strong for you, but I am reading the Bible. I didn't write it. Why? Verse 11 again. Why? Why? Because the person is condemned of himself. Do they see better than what they're doing? Yes. Yeah, see, that's the problem. They know better than what they're doing. I've had people come to me, and it, if it wasn't so serious, it'd be laughable. I'm thinking of a young man. This has happened more than once. He came to me, and he's going to straighten me out. And he start to do it, and he's trembling. He's just shaking, trying to talk to me. You know why? He knows. His heart knows he's got no business doing what he's doing. He knows in his heart how disrespectful and ugly and rude this is. But he's, he's, he's overwhelmed. He's pushing that down, and, and the rebellion in his flesh is overcoming it, and he's going to do it no matter what. Is this serious? Can you, can you get in darkness like this that you can stumble around in for decade after decade and waste your life and ruin your relationships? Is this serious, friends? Such is, 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 is condemned of itself. Uh, the uh, NET says, you know that such a person is twisted by sin and is conscious of it himself. Friends, Quit telling people the same thing over and over and over. If you'll just pause and look, so many times you'll realize they got this two years ago. They know. They know. And they, they want the attention. They want me to run after them. They want me to beg them. They want me to tell them another thousand times so they can fuss. And the enemy's just using the whole situation to keep everything boiled up and strife all the time. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. And we're being dummies enough to fall for it. Yeah. When if we'd have just done the Bible, yeah. if we'd have just yeah. done the Scripture, yeah. how many times you try to straighten them out? Once. Once. Twice. Maybe, twice. Maybe twice. And then what? No. Leave them alone. Right. Or else wise rebel against the Scripture. Why? Because they already know. They already see. And friends, we got people all over, the, especially in this country, with all the preaching we've had and all the word that we've had all over the place. We got people ought to be in these seats right here this morning, and they're at home pouting, and they've been offended, and 45 people have called them and prayed for them and talked to them, and people think, well, they just need more of that. No, honey, you could do it from their own, and it might not make any difference. Love them, pray for them, but when it comes to that stuff, leave them alone. And don't, if they want to argue, say, hey, I think you know. <laughs> I think you know. It's just between you and the Lord. I mean, there's... I, I, uh, the Lord had me to share something with a, a lady one time, and boy, she didn't like it. Oh, man, she cut me off and let me know in uncertain terms that that was the end of our friendship, and, and uh, it hurt me. This was many years ago, and I was a little more naive maybe than now, and, and I went back, and I thought, Lord, this, <laughs> I thought I was doing what you told me to do, and it just turned out so bad, and <laughs> I thought, man, did I miss it, did I miss it, and Finally, he got a hold of me. He said, son, they're not listening to me. <laughs> Why would you think they'd listen to you? <laughs> I thought, huh, <laughs> you do have a point there. 
<laughs> he said, don't take it so personally. He said, it's not just about you. They're not listening to me. That's the problem. And how many, you know, I don't even have to say it. You know it. You got relatives. You got friends. You got neighbors. You got work, co-workers, folks at work. They know so much more than what they are acting like they know. Now, you play games with yourself and deceive yourself for enough years, you can wind up self-deluded and deceived. But there was a time when they knew. When they saw and they knew, and until they get ready to hear him, they're not going to listen to you. So you just smile and be sweet and be nice, but don't bump your head against the wall, <laughs> right? And don't let, don't let the enemy work strife in your situation. Keep everything boiled up and, you know. I've had people before that they just time after time wanted to fuss and fight with me about doctrine. And finally, I just got to where I will not even talk to them about it. They bring it up, I just smile and go, not going to do it. Not even going to talk about it. Well, come on now. You know, no, no, no. I said, no. Uh-uh. Excuse me. No. I have some words I've got to be. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> got to check my cornflake box. <laughs> yeah. Something important. <laughs> Stand up on your feet, everybody. Hey, man, well, that was tremendous. And I'm glad we had a chance to share this entire message with you right here on the Word of Faith netcast. I trust this has been a blessing for you and that you've really enjoyed it. And in fact, I'd love to hear from you about how the, the uh, ministry of Pastor Keith Moore has ministered to you through showcasing his ministry here on the Word of Faith netcast. So you can write me here at Word of Faith Ministries. Okay, our address is P.O. Box 5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262, as it says here on the screen. And then you can also write me at my email address. Of course, that's going to be quicker because it won't take the time to get all the way through the, the uh, mail system, the postal system, and so forth. It'll just come straight across the internet. And so I encourage you to write me here at Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L, at W-O-F-M dot O-R-G. So write me. I want to hear from you. Let me know how these broadcasts, these last three netcasts, have ministered to you with Pastor Keith Moore. And join us again next time. Remember until then to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.